Okay, now that we have that side marked, we're going to go through and we're going to mark the other side. Um, and this is the side that reaches into the blade first because we're going to put in our, our piece on top of a screw that I put in here. And we're going to be going through this motion. Um, so we're going to actually mark the entry point to the blade with the same marks as what we had done on the other side, on the other corner. So we're going to go at 11 three quarters. We'll go at 13 and a quarter. We'll go at 13 and three quarters. And the last one's at 15 and a quarter. In a square, I'm just going to draw those lines right across so that way we have an edge to work from. And it will be square from there. So if you look at our holes right here, we have this side marked. We have the opposite side marked over here. So that way we know where our, our coves are going to be. Our cove cuts will come in, in and out of the, of the piece of material. And that way we can measure the effectiveness of our setup. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our square at a half inch. So that way we know how deep our cut will be. And we're going to make some adjustments as far as depth goes according to how it sits with the chip. Um, and I'll show you that later when we get into the, um, the piece. So I'll make sure that it goes to right about there. So that way I know how deep our cut will be. Next we need to determine how and where the curve or the cold cuts can be cut. Um, so what I did is I took the blade and I lowered it all the way down and I just did a little bit of measurements prior to filming here. Um, and we have our outside marks on our sheet on our board that we cut. Um, this one here is at 13 and three quarters. This one here is at 15 and a quarter. So what I want to do is I took the bolts and I just push, I'm just pushing down so I have a pivot point. Um, and I want to line it up so the tip. I've made a mark here on the side of the blade, so that way the um, 13 and 3 quarter inch mark is right where that blade comes out of the piece. And then when I rotate it, the 15 and a quarter inch mark will be right at the same side on the other side of the blade. So that way when it rotates through, it's going to have that curve cut all the way through. Uh, I'm just going to take a hammer here, just like a score mark that wood, so I know exactly where it, that hole is going to be. And we'll take our drill again that we had before, and we're just going to drill an eighth inch hole into the wood here, so that way we have a mark or a pivot point that we can go off of. I'm using it as an eighth inch carriage bolt um, and that's why I use the hammer so we can get it through that hole which is tight. Um, then we're going to sink that carriage bolt into the back of the plywood so that way it does not rotate on us anymore. Um, next we're going to take the plywood or the piece of wood that we have and we put it right over top of the bolt and I have a washer and a nut that we'll be using just to help keep it so it does not come off of the of the bolt. Again, we're going to check to make sure that our measurements are correct again. So if you look, the mark right here is right at the edge of the mark. I come through and our second mark is going to hit the second mark on the tape. You'll also notice that I drew some lines on the plywood here and these are the areas for safety reasons that I do not want my hands to go into. Um, so I'm not going to have my fingers touching anywhere in this area so that way I will not have the possibility of cutting them when I uh, am actually doing the cold cut. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to raise our blade so it just meets, meets the tip of the um, plywood here. And I'm going to go one full turn from there and that will be our first cut. That will be approximately an eighth inch over are uh, into the wood. So 
So we'll take this piece off and we will just double check to make sure everything cut off correctly. And you can see that we have our first cold cut cut in. Um, this will be our outside chip tray and it's centered on our marks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this first cut with the rest of the pieces. Now that I have the first cut done on all the pieces, I'm going to raise the blade 1 8 inch and that would be a one full turn basically on my bandsaw blade. Um, but you can actually, if you want to do this, you can actually go through and just use a T-square or some kind of measuring tool to measure it out. Uh, so we're going to go through, we're going to do another cut. tool here to get the piece off. Basically a screwdriver and some kind of leverage point. And that'll be our second cove. Um, but this is looking nice. A couple more passes to go. This will be cut number five. Again we're going to go up one full turn. Cut's going a little off center, but that's fine. Um, we'll go to the ship once and see how it sits in there. It actually sits pretty decent in there, so. And I think I'll make that my final cut for the depth. Let's set up for the inside radius cut, our cold cut now. Um, I'm just going to put this bolt back in the square here again, and this time we're going to measure up the inside cuts. Um, our inside measurements are at 11 and 3 quarters and 13 and a quarter. There you go, that is lined up right there with the inside mark on this side, the outside mark on that side. So what we'll do is we'll take this, give it a pound, that way we have a mark in the wood, and this one we're going to have a little bit of a problem, so we're going to have to actually bring our thing into the top side now, rather than the bottom side on all of our boards, um, simply because of my table saw is in the way. We're going to raise the blade up one, we'll bring the blade up two, it's even with the plywood here, and we'll go one full turn, and start our first cut. And that's the first cut for our inside radius. Now that we have the uh, coves cuts in here, we're going to mark the outside and the inside of the chip rail. Uh, the outside's going to be at 16 inches. And what I'll do is I will just use a string um, that's six inches, 16 inches long. And I'll use a marker on one side. I'll just use a little point of some sort. I just happen to have a hook laying around. Um, I'll put the hook on the edge. And, and for the inside curve, we will go at 11 and a quarter inches. And I'll just cut that out with the table jig stuff.
And I'll just clean up a sander at the end. I sanded the inside and outside of each of the rounded chip rails. Now we're gonna put the ends on, just like we did before. So we'll start with the pilot holes. Put a one inch brad into it. A little bit of glue on the outside here. And remember on all the trip trays, we're gonna put an end on the left side on all of these. One of them's gonna get an end on both ends, on both sides. Make sure it's flush. And you repeat the process for the other ones. Again, like I said, one of them will get uh, and on both sides. Now it's time to start placing the chip rails on to our chip rail support. So we're gonna start with the corner piece and we're gonna adjust it so that it's flush on the inside and the end is square with the table itself. And that'll be our starting point. Once we know it's square, I'm just gonna make a mark so I don't know where it's gonna go back to. going to take some glue and just run a bead on the bottom of it. And then we'll place it back on that mark again. Make sure it's flush on the inside and we'll take that square again. Now that I know it's square, I'm going to put in my first piece. I previously put some countersink holes in this piece of wood. Shut the square again. And I'm going to put in the other side here. We're going to repeat the process all the way on the other end uh, so that we can get another corner that's square. We need to cut these pieces here so that we can get them all to fit. The one that goes right in here right at the end is a little bit too long, so we have to trim each one down so they're all equal size. So that when you do the math, it's gonna be 10 and 1 8 inch. Now that I trim them down to 10 and 1 8 inch, do one final measure just to make sure, and it's gonna be 10 and 3 16 So we'll cut the next one just a tiny bit big, so that way it fits in really nice. Now that all the trays are cut so they fit, and we're gonna install one at a time. Um, we're gonna put some glue in the back side here. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna push it up so it's tight against the previous tray and it's flush on the inside. And we'll repeat, repeat the process all the way down to the other corner. We'll continue the same process for this far corner. Chip rails are done.